is one of the most iconic sounds in all of media. And it belongs to this guy, the TIE Fighter, which is one of the biggest pieces of shite vehicles on that side of the universe. And so, about a month ago, I had a thought. What if TIE Fighter, but good? And what better to design it out of than Lego? What's up, yo? It's Hard of Hair, and this guy right here is what I've dubbed, with the help of the LEGO Star Wars community, the TIE Seeker. A ship that aims to be a TIE Fighter variant without being an absolute pile of trash. Now, did I manage to do that? Well, let's take a closer look at it. Let's start with the biggest problem regarding the original TIE. This right here, the cockpit. Or more specifically, the V-port. How the hell is anyone supposed to be attacking enemies from this thing if they're coming from any other direction other than a straight head? Well, you're not. How do you fix that? Well, you give it an actual windscreen rather than just your old clothes washage dock. Of course, to keep in theme of the TIE Fighter, I have kept the iconic porthole design up front. But with my design, you'll actually be able to see approaching enemies and maybe not get blown to bits. Though, considering the skill of most TIE pilots, it's unlikely. Now, if you were to give the TIE Fighter a bit more viewing space, you'd still run into our next problem. These guys. The radiator panels. It's not enough that the cockpit's already blocking your view, might as well slap these huge slab on the side as well. Now, how have I fixed this? Well, it's quite simple. You fold them up. But don't worry, if you still wish to obstruct your view, you can do so, because these bad boys are also adjustable. Now, to be fair, there is one benefit the original TIE Fighter has it's very easy and sharp maneuverability. So to keep with that, not only have I made the side radiators adjustable, I have also added this huge rotating wing at the back. So if you were also concerned that there wasn't enough space taken by the radiator panels, don't worry, because there's more than plenty of area for them to do whatever the hell they do. However, one thing that those NASA rebels still have as an advantage is their little helpers. These fellows, the astromech droids. So I have made just enough space for one of these babies to fit on and help with system maintenance and whatever else they're capable of. Now, since this guy is a TIE twin ion engine fighter, we of course have to have our twin ion engines, and here they are. Now, they are a bit more vertical than what you'd maybe want, but you know what this bad boy has that the others don't? That's right, a hyperdrive. So if you're caught in a real pickle, you can zoom on the fuck out of there. Other improvements include two heavy laser cannons rather than these pitiful little things, but if you're looking for something lighter, then one can be found at the tip of the larger rear wing. Outside the ship design itself, I have also built a stand on which you can display the model, as well as its pilot and his helper. And that is the TIE Seeker. The sleeker, faster, stronger, and all around better TIE Fighter. But what if I were to tell you that everything I have said before this moment was a fabrication, a lie, chicanery? that none of those things listed above were actual reasons why I made the design choice I did regarding this guy. Would you believe me? Well, it doesn't matter whether you do or don't, because that is the truth. Originally, this thing wasn't even supposed to be a TIE variant at all. You want to know why it actually looks like this? Because it looks cool. It's also a TIE variant, because I thought it would look cool. But I don't think that takes away from model one bit. And I do actually want to thank the LEGO Star Wars subreddit for helping me name this guy. That was not a lie, so thank you to everyone who submitted a suggestion. It really does mean the most. And as for you, my dear viewer, if you wish to build this fella yourself and read a bit of the actual lore I've written for it, this guy, then you are more than welcome to click the first link found in the description below, which will take you to the model's repricable page, where you can download the, in my disgustingly humble opinion, official LEGO set quality digital instructions, as well as a complete parts list for easy purchasing of parts from Bricklink or any other second-hand LEGO seller. And so, I hope you've enjoyed this video, as well as this build. I sure as heck am happy with it. And if you did, then kindly consider liking and subscribing, as well as leaving your thoughts below. It would truly mean the most. So thank you all for watching, and remember kids, as the great man above, Robin Flamepork, once said, Art is a lie, nothing is real. Not, not that I consider this video to be, I mean, not to be pretending.